All right, so let's go ahead and start our project here. So go ahead and say file, new project. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with our empty activity, say next. I'm gonna call this self, self like that. And we can change this to perhaps nougat 24. Okay, very good. And I'm gonna say finish. Very good, in a few seconds, we should have our build successful, which means everything is good, so we can actually move on. So first things first, let's go to our tools, and I'm gonna go ahead and connect our Firebase or Firestore. So the first thing we're gonna do, say log analytics there. I'm gonna connect, take a few seconds. It also remember that it helps if you are already logged in, just like we did before if you've been following us, okay? So make sure you log in to Google with your Android Studio. In this case here, I'm gonna create a new Firebase project. And here it should show your email, okay? Called itself, that's very good. I'm gonna say connect, takes a few seconds. Very good, and I'm gonna go ahead also and add analytics. Now, the reason why we're adding this is because we also get other dependencies that we're gonna need. In fact, we get the Google services, which is needed, and we have the Firebase, Firebase core there, okay? Say accept changes. Very good, and while we're here, I'm gonna keep going here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this down. Let's go back. We have analytics. Let's go ahead and add authentication as well. Email and password, connect it. I'm gonna add this authentication to this app. So it accepts, because we're gonna need that, okay? To authenticate our users so they're able to use the application. Okay, that's very good. Let's see what else do we need. I'm gonna use the storage here because that's where we're gonna be storing the images. Click there, add cloud, Firebase storage, accept changes. As you can see, it's very handy to use Android Studio because we don't have to do all of that manually. So it does all the things for us. Very good, and I always like to check other things here, especially go to Gradle, build at Gradle, the first one there. And usually what happens is it downloads the older version because we are using a different version. So always to come here and get a newer version. So if you actually, let's close this down and we don't need this assistance anymore. If you have over, it says a newer version was detected. So let's go ahead and just update it right away. Change to 3.2. I'm gonna click this one as well before I sync like that, I'm gonna go sync everything. It's always a good idea to check things, especially when it comes to connecting dependencies. Also, let's go to our build that Gradle module app here, make sure everything is great. Let's go ahead and update this one as well. And I'm gonna update this one as well, so all of them. There we go, I'm gonna sync. Good, everything is good. All right, so we have everything set up here. And before I forget, it's always easy to forget. We don't really need to add the internet permission here, but because we're gonna be fetching the images, you will see this later uh, from the internet, meaning from Firebase, but we will need the internet. Um, we are going to need to pass the permissions internet. And again, when we are using Firebase or Firestore, we don't need to add the internet permission because Firebase and Firestore allow offline transactions as well so you don't need to add that permission but because for the reasons I said I'm gonna use this permission internet here uh, you will see later that so I'm gonna just put it now so we don't forget it's one thing it's easy to forget and we get frustrated when things are work okay so close this down so we can go ahead and get started now before we get started let's go ahead and check inside of our console firebase right if you go to console firebase make sure you're logged in I'm gonna go back to firebase like this if you refresh console Firebase at Google, we should be able to see our new application added, our new project itself, it is indeed there. So if you click here, you'll notice that we should have nothing yet, but at least authentication, there it is, there's nothing. Database should be empty, as you can see, as well as storage, 
Now, in order for us to start using our Firebase Firestore, we need to allow what kind of authentication we want. So we're going to go ahead and say set up sign up method or sign in method. There's all sort of sign in methods here. OK, what we're going to be using is just email and password. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. I'm going to enable this like that. And I'm going to save. OK, this is very important for when we are using authentication. Very good. I'm going to do the same thing with database here. We need to actually create our Firestore database. So create database, start locked mode. I'm going to go ahead and start in test mode. Remember again that we use the test mode when we are developing our application. So the moment that we're done developing our, our application, we want to push it or to publish it. Obviously, we need to change that mode. So in this case, test mode is fine. I'm going to say enable. A few seconds later, notice we have our self database collection is empty and everything is good. Right. OK, let's go to our storage, which we're going to be using a later time. Nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead and create one here. So get started. This is all good. I'm going to say got it. And voila, now have our storage. Very good. So we have all of the items on the back end set up for us to start using it. All right. So I want to make sure that you have all of these things set up as I've shown you here. All right. So make sure that you have all of these steps, everything set up on our project as well as in our back end here. So in the next video, we're going to start looking at our code here. So to start to put in together a user interface and some Java code so that we can start interfacing with our back end Firebase Firestore. All right, I'll see you next.